battlefield and I'm fighting. Fighting for the Lord. Mm -hmm. I promised him that I would serve him till I die, so keep on fighting. Fighting for the Lord. On this Christian journey, I have heartaches and pain, sunshine and rain, but I keep on fighting. Fighting for the Lord. I do know this. I've been up and I've been down. I'll never turn around, keep on fighting. Fighting for the Lord. If I hold out, hold out, hold out, hold out, and I know I'll get my crown. Let's say it one more time. I'm a soldier on the battlefield, and I'm fighting. Fighting for the Lord. Mm -hmm. I promised him that I would serve him till I die, so I keep on fighting. Fighting for the Lord. On this Christian journey, I have heartaches and pain, sunshine and rain, but I keep on fighting. Fighting for the Lord. Mm -hmm. I've been up and I've been down. I never turn around, keep on fighting. Fighting for the Lord. I do know this if I hold out. Hold out, hold out, hold out, help me. Hold out, got to hold, hold out. out. Clap your hands, hold out, got to hold, hold out. out. Hold out, hold out, through the storm and rain. Hold out, hold, hold out, out. through my heartaches and pain. Hold and out. I know. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give God some praise. He has brought us through to 2024. He's worthy to be praised, worthy to be lifted up. Amen. Amen. Any soldiers in the house tonight? Any soldiers here this morning? Come on, let's give that prayer. Yeah. I'm on. I'm on the I'm on, I'm on the battlefield. Oh, yes, I am. Through storm and rain. I'm on the battlefield. Through hard and pain. I'm on, I'm on the battlefield. Oh, yes, I am. I'm on, I'm on the battlefield. Oh, yes, I am. Wake it up. I'm on the battlefield. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield. Wake it up. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield. I'm 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 on the Serving till I die, so I keep on fighting. Fighting for the Lord. Yeah. All right. those 365 miracles God let me see in 2023. Won't you stand with me for the reading of the word? This morning's scripture will be coming from Philippians, the second chapter. Philippians, the second chapter, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. I'll be reading verses three through four. Amen? Don't be selfish. 
Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Amen, amen. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This is another year that the Lord has made for us to be able to come up and rejoice in this house. Happy New Year. So let's take that joy we feel and take it to the Lord and express our gratitude. As we open up our hearts and minds, we take it to the Lord in prayer. Father God, thank you for this opportunity once again to stand humbly within your midst, Father God. As you said that as long as two or three are gathered within your Missed and in your name and standing on one accord, we can move mountains, Father God. And we are looking this year to move mountains. We're asking that you fortitude. You provide us with the strength and the purpose to move forward boldly in your word, Father God, because there is work to be done. 2023 is in the rear, Father God, and we are looking forward to what the blessings that you have in store for us in 2024. But Father God, we know that there is work to be done. And we are standing here today saying that we are willing and ready to get that work done. Father God, we are renewed. We are rejoiced. This is a new year. This is a new focus. But this is the same God, Father God. And we thank you for this opportunity because many did not get the opportunity to see 2024. And Father God, we want to take a second just to say thank you. And for those who did not make it and those who are grieving, please give them a whisper of kindness and peace and gratitude so while we mourn there's still work for us to do Father God so we ask that you strengthen us you instill in us your purpose and your word as we move forward and we move forward to proclaim that you are still sovereign and on the throne Father God we ask that you continue to bless this place called Second Baptist Father God, we ask that you put your arms out around our pastor. Father God, because we know that you have given him a word and a vision, and we just need to be able to help gird him up. Father God, as we move into 2024, we ask that you put a hedge of protection around his family, Father God, and allow them to give him the strength to move forward and move boldly like you are looking for all of us to do. Father God, your church is under attack, but your people are ready and willing to stand into the gap. We are there, Father God. Whatever the enemy brings, we know will not take us down. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, Father God, because you have girded us up with the armor and the strength to rebound and to respond boldly that you are Lord and you are sovereign. And in 2024, the world is going to shake. Father God, it's going to shake because you, you are there with us. In 2024, this little place, all Second Baptist, is going to round and shake up the world. We're going to start in Elgin, and we're not going to stop here. We are your people, and we will move forward. Father God, as we take your word to the, to the prisons, Father God, we take your word to the sick house, Father God, we take your word to the government, Father God, that you are still there. Regardless of what is going on in the world, regardless of the chaos that's going on, you, Father God, have your way. And we know that we're going to go through some storms. But that's how you test us. That's how you put us through the fire and you make sure that we are fit for purpose. And there is nothing as we look forward and we look back that we have done that will not make us useful to you, Father God. So once again, as people talk about new resolutions in, in the new year, you renew us every day. And thank you for that strength, Father God. We ask that we make this a purposeful year. We ask that we make this a year that you are proud of us, Father God, as we resound to your word. And we look up and we say, Father, we just want you to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. These are our blessings and our prayers. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
and stare. I have already begun what's great that wrong he saved thus far. And you lift your voices and say, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God. Come on, I don't hear nobody. Praise God. Does anybody have a praise God in their spirit? God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for a new year. Praise God. 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 Come on, give the Lord a hand. Of praise if you don't mind. Our God is great and he is greatly to be praised. Good morning, Second Baptist. Good morning. Amen and happy new year. I pray that this year will be a reset and a restart and not a rerun. Do I have anybody in the house that believes that today? Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. And therefore, we will rejoice and be glad in it. I greet each of you in the name and faith of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith, the giver of every good and perfect gift. For I heard the Apostle Paul declare that it is in him in which we live, we move, and we have our being. We'd like to welcome everyone joining us in person, as well as those who are joining us online and I'd like to remind you for those of you who are worshiping with us online why don't you check in on our live stream let us know where you're joining us from listen our sole purpose for gathering here today is the worship and the praise of our awesome God and we invite each of you joining us in person as well as those who are online to help us praise the Lord up in here up in here, up in here. amen amen I do not come to tell you something that you do not know but rather to remind you of something that you should never forget. These are my pastoral observations for Sunday, January 7th, 2024. Amen. Amen. Bible study is every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Please be sure to join us this week as we continue our exciting discussion of Brother Moses in the book of Exodus. Also, thank you so much. Thank you so much. To those of you who remain faithful in your giving, we finished 23 strong. Come on, give yourselves a hand for the outpouring of generosity and for so many of you sacrifice that we're able to finish strong and we are uniquely positioned to do great things in this year. And I'm so delighted and excited about it. Please remember to utilize our drive and drop service at any time throughout the week. You can pick up offering envelopes, uh, daily devotionals and and drop off your offering, we would love for you to be consistent in that manner. Also, face coverings are optional here at the Second Baptist Church of Elgin for all worship services, activities, and events within the building. But as always, please, ma'am, please, sir, stay at home if you feel sick. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Also, please feel free to drop off your one to five-year-olds at our wonderful nursery. And if you have children aged six to 12 years old, please consider releasing them to our children's church in our front sanctuary. We promise to take real good care of them. Amen. Also, just a reminder, just a reminder, next Sunday, somebody say next Sunday. Next Sunday. Amen. Next Sunday in the sanctuary up front, immediately following morning worship, we will meet to announce the ministry leaders of our new 
teen ministry and to answer any questions that anyone may have regarding this new ministry. And then on Sunday, January the 21st, we will make history here at the Second Baptist Church of Elgin as we launch this wonderful new ministry. So I ask that please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to pray with and for the leadership and with and for all of our young people as we seek to create a meaningful worship experience for our young teenage population. Is anybody excited about our young people today? Amen. And what they are doing and what God is doing in and through them. Also, on Saturday, January the 24th, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., the Safe Ministry of Second Baptist Church presents From Surviving to Thriving, a Call to End Human Labor and Sex Trafficking. And that is taken from the 82nd number of Psalm, verse 4, which says, Stand up for the powerless and those in need. Save them from the clutches of the wicked. So please be sure to join us and learn more about this important topic. Oftentimes when I address the leaders of Second Baptist, I have posed a question to them as one of my the theology professors once posed to me many years ago when he asked a question to these young students that he said, does the world set the agenda for the church or does the church set the agenda for the world? He would always ask that. And, and his answer was always that it is the world that sets the agenda for the church. It is the world that is hurting, that when we listen and, and understand what the world is feeling, we create meaningful ministries to meet them at the point of their need. We don't go in trying to present a solution to a problem we don't even know exists. Amen. And so as we continue to watch the news and hear more and more about human and sex trafficking, it, it, it becomes, it behooves us as a body of believers to stand up and do something about it. It behooves us to at least stand up and raise our voices to say this is wrong. Amen. And so I, I'm excited about the safe ministry, how they're plowing new ground even in that respect to say we want to raise awareness for this problem that is so pervasive in our community. Amen. Amen. And then also I want to remind you about the theme for this year, more in 24. 24 is here. Amen. And so anything that happens from this point on qualifies as more in 24. Amen. And I've reminded you that in this year we're going to do more service. Amen. We're going to, we pray that there will be more support within the ministries and more support through your prayers. But then lastly, we pray for more sacrifice. Amen. That God would press us, that God would stress us, stretch us and take us to plates and places and heights that we have not imagined. Amen. And so today you're going to hear more about service. Amen. I started to switch it up and start with sacrifice because for so many of us, there was a sacrifice to get here today. Is that right? Amen. And when I saw it snowing, I said, man, I might have to start with sacrifice. Because I know there's somebody here that said, man, I might just stay at home. But I thank God. Give yourselves a hand for so many of you in the house of the Lord to celebrate a brand new year. Amen. Also, please continue to pray for the sick and the shut in. And I invite each of you to join us on our weekly prayer line every Saturday morning from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And if you need the log on information, please see a member of our ministry, missionary ministry, or contact Sister Cheryl Macon for more information. And for those of you who desire specific prayer on Sundays, please join our missionary ministry immediately following morning worship in rooms 205 and 207. There someone can meet you and pray with and for your specific prayer requests. Amen. And now, before we receive our tithes and offerings, our SBC hospitality ministry will come on behalf of the church to bring official greetings. Say amen as they come. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Brother Doctor. Good morning. good morning. Happy New Year to these wonderful, loving people of Second Baptist Church of Elgin. To our visitor, this is the time we have set aside to greet you. If we have any visitor, we ask you to please stand. Amen, 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 amen. 
God is so good. God is so good. Amen. The first Sunday in the new year. You know, 10 years ago, I stood up where you're standing, and somebody stood up here and invited me and extended me Amen. an invitation to join Second Baptist. And today, I'm extending you that same invitation. If you're looking for a church home, please consider Second Baptist Church. Amen. And to our online visitor, we ask you to please follow us uh, in the contact link. And if you're looking for a special prayer, let us know. Thank you, and let's do it in 2024. God Amen. bless. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining us here today. We are so happy to have you. And now as our music ministry prepares to come, let us take this opportunity to receive our tithes and our offerings in person. It was the Apostle Paul who declared to the church at Corinth, let every person as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. I want to ask Reverend Andrew Love to come at this time to offer up our offertory prayer. Say amen as he comes. Amen. Second Baptist and Happy New Year to all. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, we have come again in this place, thanking and just praising you for the privilege and the opportunity to honor you, dear Father God, with our tokens of appreciation, our tithes, our offerings, all this that you've given us, dear Father God. We can't give you, dear Father God, all that you give us, but we pray that you would receive it, dear Father God, that you would bless it, multiply it, do with it that which you choose, dear Father God. We thank you so much for this new year, and we pray, dear Father God, that you bless each household here, and Lord, that you would be glorified in all the things we say and or do. This is my prayer, and I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let's receive our music ministry now as they come.
simmer as you think back over your life and you recognize how God was there for you all the time how he continued to make a way out of no way how he did exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ask or imagine how he became water when you were thirsty bread when you were hungry we're talking about a God who's able he's able I tell you hallelujah I know it's hard, but don't you give up. Don't give up. Because he won't give up on you. Our God is able. Amen. Let's bow for a word of prayer. There's a charge to keep I have. A God to glorify. A never dying soul to save. And fit it for the sky. To serve this present age. My calling to fulfill, may it all my powers engage to do my master's will. Our Lord and our God, how grateful we are today to stand on the doorstep of another year. That Father God, how you brought us from a mighty long ways, you've continued to bless us and keep us. And now as we stand on this side of 2024, we come needing to hear a word from you. For in times like these, if we don't hear from you, we won't know what to do. So my prayer is that you would speak with my mouth, think with my mind, let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So much so that when we go down from this place, we might be happy and excited that we stopped by the church house on this morning. So forgive us of our sin. Fix us for this worship experience. Fill us with your spirit, O oh God, and then feed us until we want no more. These and other blessings we pray in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's name. Let every heart say, Amen. Amen. Father, I, I stretch my head to Lord, to thee, no one I know, need 
Vita We Lord withdraw Thy Thyself From Me Oh Where The Shall I go Come on let's all stand Let's all stand in the presence of God on this New Year's Day, this, this first New Year's service of 24, I want to read in your hearing a word from the epistle written to the church at Philippi, commencing in the third verse of chapter 2, concluding in verse 4. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. When you arrive at Philippians 2, 3 and 4, you'll find these words recorded as translated in the New Living Translation. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. Amen. Have your seats in the presence of the Most High God just a little while for the time that is mine. Oh, I like to preach and teach with this thought in mind on this first Sunday of 2024. I want to speak from the subject of more service. Amen. More service. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. <clears throat> we knew it was coming. We knew it was coming. We tried to ignore it, tried to talk around it, but each of us knew that the day would eventually come when we would receive that untimely and unwanted delivery from heaven of that cold, powdery white stuff that we call no. Amen. When many of us awoke yesterday morning, peeked out the nearest window. We knew it was going to be, as Monica once mentioned, just one of them days. Uh -oh. <laughs> Amen. When I want to be all alone. Alone. With a hot cup of chocolate. A hot cup of coffee. Or for me, a hot cup of tea. Notice how I neglected to mention a hot toddy. Amen. I know some of y'all were weak. Because some of y'all put too much toddy in your hotties. Amen. And one of them days can slowly turn into one of them nights. Amen. And come Sunday morning, you watch it from the live stream, talking about, Rev, I couldn't make it this morning. I'll check y'all out on TV. But, but on days like these, I sometimes like to sit and enjoy a nice hot cup of tea. Herbal tea. Green tea. That's your flavor, Rev? Earl Grey. You understand. But beloved, I'll have you to know that there is an art to making good tea. You can dip a tea bag up and down in hot water and then pull it out, or you can let it dwell there to experience the tea's full strength and flavor. And beloved, I've come to discover that being a mature Christ follower is similar to making good tea. Merely dipping into God's presence once a week for worship will not suffice. Dipping in and out of God's presence will not make you a mature Christ follower. But God, God, yes, wants us to dwell in him 
on a daily basis. See, see, when you're a dipper, you cannot be as effective by simply popping in and popping out trying to quickly make things happen. I'm working real good here for a first Sunday. Moving the tea bag up and down, wrapping the string around the spoon, squishing it and carrying on. That's too much effort. And that's not how God wants us to live and to walk the Christian walk. God wants us to be dwellers and not just dippers. Are y'all praying with me this morning? The, 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 the depth and the duration of our dwelling will determine the strength and the richness of our spiritual lives. And in the same way, the amount of work we put into this ministry will determine the level of satisfaction that we get out of our association with this ministry. Are y'all in here with me? In other words, someone said you get out. Am I going to help me preach here this morning? What you put in. And I hear Jesus declaring in John 15 and 4, dwell in me and I will dwell in you. Live in me and I will live in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit of itself without abiding in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me but Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in him bears much abundant fruit. However, apart from me, you can do nothing. And it is my prayer that as we seek to do more in 24, each of us would make a sincere effort to do more service in the church more service in the community. At the time of our text, Paul, from the inside of a prison cell, is encouraging the Philippian believers on the outside to continue the cause of Christ. He says it right here in chapter 1, verse 27. He says, above all, you must live as citizens of heaven. He says, conducting yourselves in a manner worthy of the good news about Christ. In other words, live like you truly believe what you're proclaiming to other people. Are y'all in here with me? But, but because people, people won't say anything, but they are watching. <laughs> Hallelujah, yes. They're, they're, they're watching to see how you handle trouble, how you handle bad news, how you handle bad attitudes, how you handle sickness, how you handle suffering. They're watching to see if how you act line up with what you say. Are y'all in here with me? Oh, hallelujah, yes. Paul says, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy. Let the church say worthy. Worthy of the good news about Christ. Listen, essentially what I'm saying is demonstrate to people that you are, in fact, eating what you serve. On, <laughs> Lord have mercy. You know, if somebody had just come and just serving everything and they ain't never eaten off of it, they said, I got to wonder because I'm watching. Wait a minute, you piling my plate on. I don't see nothing. I wish I had somebody here. I don't see nothing on your plate. You want some more of this? Take some more of this. No. Are you eating what you serve? Are you consuming what you cooking? You cooking in the kitchen all day. You ain't eating nothing. I'm wondering. I'm watching you. As, I, as I'm eating you, are you taking what you're prescribing? Or are you just giving medicine to everybody else? But it ain't good enough to heal you as well. One person proudly proclaimed, I'm not a client, I'm the player president. I thought I'd throw that in here on the first Sunday in 24. In other words, as the songwriter says, I'm persuaded, Lord, to love you. I have been changed to bless your name. I'm constrained by this great gospel forever to worship thee. But then in chapter 2, verse 1, Paul shifts from those on the outside of the church to those on the inside. 
He essentially says through a series of rhetorical questions that since we are the beneficiaries of so many blessings because of the blood of Jesus, then we should be able to agree with one another. We should be able to love one another. We should be able to work with one another. In other words, we cannot win over the world until we win over one another. We, we cannot love those outside of the church without loving those inside of the church. And before we can carry out God's work on the outside, each of us must do some personal work on the inside. I'm talking about the inside of your heart. Each of us has got to work on ourselves and allow the Holy Spirit to work on us so that we will be equipped to do what God would have us to do in such a time as this. Beloved, if we're going to do more service in 2024, then we must endeavor, first of all, to be unselfish. This thing ain't all that deep this morning. I said, it's, it's snowing outside. I'm ready to get back home and eat my breakfast. We're going to keep this thing real simple. So if you want to endeavor to do more service, be unselfish. Look at the A portion of verse 3. He says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Amen. Beloved, I've come to discover, hear me well, that everything that happens or doesn't happen in the local church can be traced back to your heart's response to this one burning question. Why? Are you here? I'll let it soak and simmer. It, 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 it's the response to that burning question within your heart. Everyone has to ask themselves this. Only you know the answer. Why you really? Put on your clothes, slipped on your boots, and came into the house of work. Why are you here? I know what you said in your testimony. I know what you say publicly, but deep down in your hearts, why are you here? Why did you choose this church out of all the other churches you could have joined? Why do you serve in the ministry that you serve in? Why do you give what you give? Why do you do what you do? Are you here only to impress other people? To pad your resume? to improve your tax deduction. Is it all about you? Beloved, if we're going to do more in 24, then we must shift the focus from ourselves to others. We've got to shift it. We can't be selfish. We can't be self-seeking, self-serving, the Bible says, first, Peter 4 and 10, God has given each of us a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Amen. Peter says, use them well to serve one another. That's what the book says. Listen, it, it's been said before and it bears repeating the spiritual gifts that God has given each of us are not for ourselves, but they are for other people. They are to benefit and to bless other people, and that's why Paul said in Ephesians 4, 11, and 12 that the gifts Christ gave to the church are to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. And even when Jesus was here on earth, he too was unselfish in his servant. For I heard him declare the other day, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. We want to do more service in 24. We're going to first of all have to be unselfish. Secondly, as I hurry on, not only be unselfish, but we're going to have to be submissive. We're going to have to be submissive. If we want to do more service, we, we want to do more service, the B portion of the verse says, be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Now that's, that's a tough stumbling block right there. 
Because maybe somebody in here saying, I've rarely met anybody equal to me. <laughs> Let alone, I wish I had somebody better than me. But, but, but Paul says, thinking of others as better than yourselves, I'll let it soak. Amen. Preach. That everybody we look at is better than us. At the time of our text, this, this concept of submission was countercultural. The pagan and the secular idea of manhood was self assertiveness, imposing one's will on others. I'm talking about getting up in folks' face, chest to chest. And when anyone stooped to someone else, it was because they had to, not because they wanted to. Are y'all in here with me? But those who have been washed by the blood of the Lamb have been called to a higher standard. Been called to a higher standard. The Bible challenges us to think of others as better than ourselves. Listen, we, we cannot conduct ourselves like we made the bread, baked the bread, sliced the bread. That no one is bigger, better, or badder than us. If we're going to do more service in 2024, then we must learn to be submissive. Listen, it, it, it doesn't have to be our way all the time. Are y'all in here? I say it don't have to be your way all the time. A whole bunch of us up in here, up in here, every now and then. Someone else has a good perspective, a good idea. You're not the only person with a great idea. And we don't have to win every argument. But we should endeavor to win every soul. Amen. And, and sometimes we must give a little ground. Sometimes we must be intentional about showing other people that they do, in fact, matter. That what they say matters, that they are seen, and that they are heard. First Peter 5 and 5 says, clothe yourselves. All of you with humility toward one another, for God opposes the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. If you're too proud, God's hand will be against you. And in Romans 14 and 17, Paul says regarding, among other things, a disagreement over which foods a believer can or cannot eat. He said this, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. That when it's all said and done, my brothers and sisters, the question on the floor is, how are we living? Yeah. Are we living the life that we sing about in the song? Are we living the life that is written within the pages of sacred writ? When, when the live stream is off, when the lights are off, when no one is looking, are we living the life? Paul goes on to say in verse 19, so then let us aim for harmony in the church and try to build each other up as opposed to tearing one another down. Those are my words at the end, not Paul. I said, instead of tearing one another Amen. down. Well, let me be through. Got some good games coming on this afternoon. I lift it up to you today that if you want to, if you want to, I'm sorry. Right? You, you, you want more service in 24? You're going to have to be unselfish. You want to do more service in 24? Secondly, you're going to have to be submissive. But lastly, as I close, if you want to do more service in 24, we're going to have to be sensitive. Turn and tell somebody, be sensitive. Verse 4 says, don't look out only for your own interests, 
but take an interest in others too. Let me tell you, y'all, it's difficult to serve people that you don't care about. Now, we all know how that feels. You, you at the bank, you, don't be at the restaurant somebody serving your food mad. Oh, my goodness. Don't be anywhere when you're trying to serve somebody and you got an attitude. Don't nobody want nothing you've given. Got your face all frowned up passing me my chicken. And my biscuits. Give me this biscuit. We, 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 we want to care about the people that we are serving. It's difficult to serve hurting people when you don't even know where they're hurting. Because you don't take the time to learn about what they think, about what they feel, about how they express themselves. And if we're going to do more service in 24, then we must begin to be more sensitive to one another. There's a phrase that is going around in our lexicon. It's not a new phrase, but it's been newly introduced into our lexicon. You're hearing it more and more often. It's a phrase called cultural competence. Amen. You're, you're, you're hearing it more and more. It's not a new concept, but it's being reintroduced. Cultural competence. And, and it's been defined in many different ways by many different people, but I like Diana Denboba's definition the best. She said, cultural competence is defined as a set of values, behaviors, attitudes, and practices within a system, organization, program, or among the individuals and in which enables them to work effectively cross-culturally. I know that's a lot. But he says that she's essentially saying that when we understand who we are, we'll be able to interact properly with one another. In, in, in other words, what she's saying is we must learn to be sensitive to all people. Listen, it would be insensitive to suggest that every ethnicity is culturally the same. Every people group are, per, are, are all culturally the same. And that's why we had to go and, and, and rethink how we teach children. I wish I had time this morning. We, we, we've got to go back and see how we teach kids because based on our culture, based on our background, we are learning and we're hearing things differently. Preach, Patrick. We, we, we have to have cultural competence. It's insensitive to suggest that every ethnicity, black, white, Hispanic, are all culturally the same. But watch this. Here's where we make a mistake. It is also insensitive to suggest that all black people are culturally the same. I wish I had somebody in here this morning. All black people are not culturally the same. We don't all eat fried chicken. Even though I can go for four wings right up through now, mild salt, salt and pepper on the fries. I could go for me some chicken right up through now. But everybody don't eat fried chicken. Everybody don't like rap music. Everybody that's born on the south side of Chicago is not a Sox fan. I thought I'd throw that in for free. Every chocolate person don't vote the same. It's culturally insensitive to suggest otherwise. Are y'all tracking with me? And so, Yes, beloved, if we're going to do more service in 24, then we must be more sensitive to the people who don't talk like us, who don't act like us, who don't live like us, who don't look like us, who don't vote like us. We've got to be more sensitive. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, watch this, people fail to get along because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because they have not communicated with each other. Got to learn to be sensitive. 
We're going to do more service. We've got to be sensitive. Paul, he cautions the Philippians, don't look out only for your own interest. But he says, be willing to step outside of the box. Be willing to step outside your comfort zone and take an interest in others too. Well, I'm closing now. But can I tell you that we have the power to do more in 24? I said, we have the power to do more in 24. Why? Because we have the power of God's spirit working in us, working through us, and working for us. The power to be unselfish. The power to not puff myself up. The power to testify that I must decrease and he must increase. But secondly, the power to be submissive to not always lead, but to be able to also follow. Yes. To not always talk, but to be willing uh, to listen. Yes. The power to humble ourselves under the mighty hand uh, of God. Yes. Trusting uh, and believing uh, that he will, uh, I said he will, uh, exalt you in uh, due season uh, oh praise his name but lastly beloved uh, we have the power uh, to be sensitive uh, sensitive to how others act how they react uh, how they interact uh, with one another uh, am I right about it sensitive uh, to what others uh, have been through, what God uh, has brought them through, and what God uh, is bringing them through. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, beloved, uh, when we are unselfish, when we are submissive, uh, and when we are sensitive, uh, we'll be able uh, to do more uh, in 24. Uh, Ain't God all right? Uh, and I can't speak for nobody else, uh, but I'm pressing on uh, the upward way. Uh, new heights I'm gaining uh, every day. Uh, still praying uh, as I onward crown. Uh, Lord, plant my feet uh, on higher ground. Uh, Happy New Year, Second Baptist. Uh, do you want to do more in 24? Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, say yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Come on, give the Lord a hand, praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to do more in 24. It starts with more service. Jesus said the greatest among you will be that individual that has the capacity to serve. That's what unlocks the blessing. And then we'll move on from more service. Next week we'll talk about more support. But everything starts with prayer. And it starts with the willingness on your part to decide to do it. And then lastly we'll end up with more sacrifice. But as we prepare to close out this service, there may be one in our midst. Come on, preachers. There may be one in our midst that's made up in their mind. They want to do more. And doing more for Jesus begins with making a decision to follow Jesus. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. Man, woman, boy, or girl, let her. Christian experience and candidate for baptism. Now's your time. Now's your turn. Will you come? Come on, Father.
Though Satan, he tried to stop me and to place my feet on sinking sand. But through the pain and all of my sorrows, through the tears, Because I've been so faithful, no, no, no. It's not because I've always obeyed, no, it's not because I've trusted Him. He was there to answer my call. He was there always to protect me. For he's kept me in the midst of it all. I've come. Oh, yes, I have. Many hard trials. Do temptation. 
Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy here. I feel all right this morning. I thought about staying home, but I didn't know who was going to preach. I'm glad I showed up this morning. I feel a little better now. I feel like I can make it. So anybody feel like I can make it now? Tell somebody, I'm glad I came to church. Hallelujah, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe God is saying it's going to be more worship in 2024. Yeah, you got more coming in 24. It's going to be more worship. There's more praise coming in 24. Maybe we've been too quiet in here over the few years. Maybe it's time to get a little louder up in here. Up in here. Oh, hallelujah. As we settle our hearts and our minds, we approach this table. Hallelujah. We thank God for the five looks. We look to God even now, the author and the finisher of our faith. We look to Jesus Christ who died for our sins. We look out to one another, praying that if we've sinned and we have, against one another, we would ask for forgiveness, even now. We look back at the cross of Calvary where he hung, bled, and died for us. But then we look forward to the day when he is soon to return. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, how we thank and praise you for what our hearts feel right now. That we're filled with inexpressible joy when we think about the name of Jesus and all that he's done, our souls cry out, hallelujah. We thank you for being born perfectly. We thank you for living perfectly. We thank you for dying appropriately. We thank you for rising with all power. And then we thank you that we believe that you're soon to return. And so as we approach this table and these symbols, symbols of your broken body, symbols of your shared blood, oh, the blood, we thank God for your blood that cleanses us. And now, oh God, we pray that as we receive these symbols, we would be reminded of all of your precious promises that all of your promises in Christ are yes and amen. We believe what you said. We believe that we have been born again. We, have, we believe that by your stripes we are healed. We believe that you're soon to return. We believe that you've got all power. We believe that you're able to do exceeding and abundantly more than we can ask or imagine according to the power that worketh in us. And so now, oh God, as we receive these symbols, encourage our hearts to live like you live, to serve like you serve, and that when it's time for you to call us home, we might die with that same dignity, knowing that when we die, death is not the end, but only a transition into something greater and more beautiful. And so now as we worship together, let us look to love one another. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.
Amen. Has everyone had the opportunity to be served? Amen. On this first Sunday in 2024, let us be together. Let us drink together. Amen. <clears throat> was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood. Oh yeah. It was my Savior's blood. Oh yeah. It was my Savior's blood for me. One day when I was lost, He died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood I want to sing, he's coming back. He's coming back again. Oh, yeah. He's coming back again. Oh, yeah. He's coming back again for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the wrong. And I know it was the blood. It was the blood, I know it was the blood for me. Come on, put your hands together if you thank God for the blood. Amen. Every time I take those symbols, I thank them more and more. How we thank and praise God as we prepare to go down from this place. Let's all stand to offer up a word of corporate prayer. Amen. Corporate prayer. <clears throat> God, our help in ages past, our hope in years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Before the hills in order stood, or earth received her frame, from everlasting thou art God, through endless years the same. Master, how we thank and praise you on this day, this day that you have made. And Lord God, we come rejoicing, being glad that we are a part of it. We're glad, oh God, that you've allowed us to stand on the front porch of another year. 
We recognize, oh God, that as we look back over the shoulder of this past year, that millions did not make it. But we were one of the ones who did. And we thank and praise you today for your keeping power. We thank you, oh God, that you've allowed our moments to go and roll on just a little while longer. Oh, Father God, we come acknowledging that you're God all by yourself. And beside you, there is none other. We know that you sit high, but you look low. We believe that you're able, you got all power. And we thank you, oh God, that you are our God and we are your children. There's none like you. We thank you today, oh God. And we confess as we stand collectively and corporately that we've missed the mark, that we have not always done everything that you told us to do. Forgive us, oh God, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father God, we, we've said and done some things that we should not have done, God. Forgive us in the name of Jesus. Help us to be more like you, to walk like you, to talk like you, to live like you, to love like you. Oh, Father God, as we seek to do more in this time, Father God, empower us to be more selfless, empower us to be more submissive, and then empower us to be more sensitive to those who are around us. Lord God, we thank you for those that have come into your presence on today, that have pressed their way to worship in spirit and in truth. We thank you for every visitor. We thank you for familiar friends who are in the midst, Father God, who are worshiping on this first Sunday. And Lord God, we're not asking right now, God, on behalf of someone else who may be sick in their body and cannot offer up a prayer on behalf of themselves. Lord God, touch as only you know how. Be with that individual whose heart is hurting, whose body is racked with pain. Father God, let them feel your comfort, your peace, and your presence even now in the name of Jesus. We pray for every family who is still going through bereavement. We continue to lift up Sister Carolyn Logan before you today. That Father God, we thank you that though her heart is heavy, she still pressed her way into the house of worship. Father God, bless her as only you know how. Comfort her and feel the void of the loss of her dear son. Fill it with your presence even now in the name of Jesus. And then, God, our prayer goes out to the unsealed family, Father God. Father God, just sometimes there are words that cannot express what we're going through. And, Father God, when words fail us, we ask that you would be able to interpret every tear, that you would put them all in the bottle, as your psalmist said, and that you would understand what we're going through. Oh, God, wrap your arms around that family even now in the name of Jesus. And then we lift up others, the Turnip Seed family and, and the Cotton family and those who have recently lost loved ones. That grief we recognize has no time frame. And so, Father God, be with them even now. And then, oh God, our prayer is for our young people that as we prepare to launch this ministry that we seek to meet the needs of our young teenage population, that you would empower, enlighten, and encourage the leadership that has been designated to lead in such a time as this, and that they would be supportive to hear our children and to see our children and to meet them at the point of their need as they go through so many challenges. Bless our young people even now in the name of Jesus. Bless them as they come and go. Bless them as they attend their school and attend to their studies. And then, Father God, as we seek to do more service in this time, raise up a new generation of leaders, of people who will serve this present age, their calling to fulfill, and may all their powers engage to do your holy will. We're going down from this place, but never from your presence. We need your grace that we might continue to run this race. Until we meet again, will you continue to watch over us? Bless our comings and goings. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let every heart say.
Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand and clap of praise. God be with you. God be with you. God be with you until we meet again. God be with you. God be with you. God be with you until we meet again. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. And all God's people did lift their voices and sing together. Amen. 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 God bless you. Have a great week. We thank you for worshiping with us today. And if you're looking to connect with a loving church that faithfully teaches God's message of hope, then visit our website at sbclgenil.org and follow the link that says join our church. We hope to see you soon at the second.